Uh, well, it looks like we might have Tim on the line. Tim, can you hear us? Yep, I'm here. How are you doing? Good. How are you doing? Good. Doing all right. How was your Labor Day weekend? Uh, it was good. It was uh, um, too many hot dogs, but other than that, yeah. pretty good. So, no kidding, right? That's always nice a good weather. thing, though. So uh, what are we looking at today? Um, I, I got your chart. Did you finally get them? Yes, I have chart one up now, and I'm getting the other ones uh, as we speak. So, All right. Well, chart one, uh, actually, I, I kind of developed this chart several years ago. But anyhow, what it is, I don't know. Tell you the truth, I don't know why this works so well, but it works, and that's all you need to know. But it's a bullish percent index for the gold miners index slash GDX ratio. And the bullish percent index for the gold miners index, what the bullish percent does is measures the percent of stocks that are on point and point and figure bicycle in the uh, gold miner uh, gold market uh, gold miners index. Whatever that index stocks are in the in the uh, gold miners index, it measures the percent of stocks on buy signals using a point and figure method. And GDX is GDX. So if you do that ratio. And this is a weekly chart, and the top window is the RSI for this for this particular ratio. So every time the weekly RSI for the bullish percent index slash GDX gets below, um, I think twenty five. Yeah, twenty five. It's at a bottom, and this chart goes back to two thousand eight, and all the blue lines are the buy signals, and there's one uh, red line in there, and that's a failure. For some reason, it didn't work in 2013. The market went down, and it actually kept going down. But all the other times, it picked out lows, and uh, some were significant lows. Actually, most of them were significant lows. Some were minor lows, but um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 10. So 90% chance uh, we're at a low here. According to this, because it's ten times this happened, one failure, so that's ninety percent that we're at set at some uh, at some sort of low. Um, uh, most signals of this type last a year. Sometimes they last a uh, couple, three years, but most of them are a year or longer. Uh, so we're, we're sitting on a signal right now as we're talking because uh, that's go below minus twenty five. We're at fifteen and a half area right now. Uh, so now I want to actually, so this suggests we're at a yearly low uh, right now. Last time this thing gave a signal was last year in 2022, mm. uh, going into the um, August low. Uh, so the market went up. Now we got, it got another buy signal, uh, again, pretty much in August, September here. Now if you flip to chart two, um, got it okay. over here right now. This is the we're going to go back and forth here a little bit, and this reason why I wanted to show the long-term chart. Now we're going to look at a little bit of a short-term chart. Anyhow, the bottom window is the 50-day average of the up-down volume um, percent for GDX. Every time it got below minus 20, which it did first part of July, uh, every time it got below, I can take this chart back further, but every, going back to uh, 2008 on this chart, if I wanted to to kind of keep it in a shorter time frame because the signals all remain basically the same. As you can see it a lot better. But normally when you get down below minus 20, the decline is done, and usually the market flips sideways. And now sometimes you get, you get minor new lows, but in general, the downtrend is done. And previous times we got the signal, we got one in 2021 that flipped sideways for six months before the rally got going. And in 2022, these signals come about once a year. Uh, the market went kind of sideways for about four months before the rally began. And we're currently going sideways for, for two months right now. And normally when you get above 50, that's when the uptrend starts. And uh, last week we were above 50. Right now we're just a, sm a smidge below 50. We're at minus one point, or not 50, rather zero, sorry. When this when the signal gets above zero, uh, or this indicator gets above zero, is when the rally starts. And it has to stay above zero for the rally to continue. And it went above a zero here last week. Now we kind of fell below it as we're 1.93 or 1.73 uh, right now, which anyhow is hovering around three. 
But if you go back to chart one, again, we're at a near midterm low. So the downside is over. There's not going to be another um, uh, catastrophic decline here. The market's probably, you know, back and forth a little bit, but the decline's over. This is really, for a near midterm trade, this is a good place to buy. We rallied up a little bit. We kind of came down a little bit. But once you get above 50 and stay above 50, that's usually when the meat of the rally starts. And all this blue area on this chart number two is when the um, uh, 50-day average up-down volume advanced client indicator stays above zero. Uh, so it could be a little choppy in here, but the downtrend's over. We may move sideways a little bit longer. Don't know, because previous signals of this type can go from a month to six months. We're at two months now. Can it go sideways for another month? Maybe. But either way, we're, the downside is over, and either we're building a base for a rally. And previous rallies, uh, again, lasted uh, a year. So, uh, in general, we expect the market to actually uh, to break above the previous highs of 36. And uh, it's hard to say where it's going to go. But uh, this was a bullish area. Tom and I were talking last week and saying, you know, this is a good place to buy. Right. On the intermediate term trade, it is. So um, I'm holding uh, to that philosophy, I guess you might say. I'm holding to that definition. So uh, you have a question? No, no. I think it's just very fascinating. I mean, you know, especially with everything going on today with uh, the dollar, it's good to get some, like, good conversation surrounding, you know, the GDX in general, right? So. Yeah. 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 And so that's why I kind of flip back and forth. So, well, you know, a lot of people say, well, this, this indicator fell back, back below zero. Well, it did. But intermediate term wise on, on page one, this indicator, it works 90% of the time. So you really don't want to bet against it. It's saying that, that you're at a intermediate term low and the previous signals of this type last a year. Um, this type of signal that we got, we're currently having right now can last several months. I'm thinking we'll probably could rally into. You know, maybe November, December, then we may take a rest first part of next year. Don't know how it's all going to gel out. But in general, we're going to be a lot higher than we are now a year from now. Absolutely. And Tim, uh, we're, we have a short segment right after this break. If you want to stay with us, I'd love to look through the, uh, the other two charts quickly if you have time. All right, will do. Awesome. Folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back with Tim Moore. Welcome back, folks. We're about two and a half minutes until the end of the program, but we're still with Tim Ord taking a look at uh, some of his fantastic charts. Tim, you're with us? Yep, I'm here. Awesome. We're looking at the so, SPX, and then we have the SPY chart as well. Right. Uh, chart number three, which is the uh, the middle window, is the SPX VIX ratio. Mm. And um, when the S&P is making a higher high and this ratio makes a lower high as a, as a, as a uh, bearish divergence, and now all those red aerials going back to um, uh, several years, 2018, wherever it is, they, they picked out intermediate term highs. And the last time this ratio gave a, a sell signal was back in, in a, actually uh, January of 2022 and correctly picked out that high because S&P's made higher highs. This ratio made lower highs. That was a bearish divergence. What I want to point out right now is the s and P's has not got back to the original highs of uh, July there, you know, we're, we're quite a ways from that high. But if you go down to the ratio, uh, if you look at the small window there, we actually made higher highs on that ratio. That's a bullish divergence. So there could be some minor pullbacks here, but it looks like to me we're going to get back probably the, this month back up to at least the old highs up around 4,500. What happens here, I'm not for sure, but this ratio is giving a bullish sign here short term. Um, so even though this actually this week, of all the weeks in the year, this is the second weakest week of the year. Uh, so there's a good chance we see a, probably some sort of a pullback this week. It's one of the reasons why I'm short. But I'm, I'm keeping a short leash on that short because I don't think anything major to the downside is indicated here, especially with this SPX VIX ratio making a higher high where the SPX is making a lower high. So after this pullback, probably during expiration week, we're going to have a rally. In my opinion, uh, the rally, which is next expiration week, or next week is expiration week, will test 
uh, the old highs of uh, July. So point that out. I know we're out of time. Yeah, sorry we so. had some issues with the chart there. Um, I think you'll be on sometime this week again. I might be filling in for Tom. So I we can go over the last chart as well. So. Tim, that thank you good. so much for being on with us. Everyone, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, we will be back tomorrow. Have a great rest of your evening.